Okay, so I'm right here with Julie Fox. Hi, I go by Jules. Um, how are you doing, Ju uh, Julie or Jules? <laughs> uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, it's been uh, a good morning so far. We're just uh, getting it done. Another beautiful day in paradise. <laughs> so, um, so how long have you been here in Slab City? Uh, I got here in January, and I've been here at the Haven since I want to say about uh, May. Uh, well, April, April, I think, um, is when I took it over and started cleaning it up and uh, started working on this project. So. Okay. So what is it that you do here at the at the at the Haven? Um, I know that I brought you some ice right yes. now. Thank you and so much. Because you do help people. That's what you told me. You yeah, know. yeah. So um, basically, anybody that shows up at my door needing any kind of help, uh, really, you know, we help them out. So whether it's food, water, um, you know, safety, security. I've helped quite a few women that, um, you know, have been in domestic violence situations. Um, you know, uh, we do a little bit of the needle exchange. We're trying to get set up with that so that, um, you know, at least people can hopefully stay, uh, stay healthy, even if they're going to be using. And um, we always provide, you know, Narcan and stuff like that. We don't want anybody ODing. Um, just, you know, I've helped return stolen items. You know, sometimes I'm just in here to listen. It's a... Uh, we do a lot of different things. If somebody needs shelter, needs a place to crash, I mean, really, if anybody needs any help, I'm willing to try and help them in any way that I can. And uh, the, the local dogs, too. <laughs> uh, all the neighborhood dogs, you know, the slab dogs, they like to come through and they use our little pool here I got set up for them. We give them food, water, um, shade, lovins, all the, all the things that they might need. Mm -hmm try to do that for humans and and dogs <laughs> so you just you're you're fairly new to slab city mm -hmm. then yep um i had looked it up uh you know many years ago actually uh when i was kind of planning out some traveling and stuff that i wanted to do and i was hoping to find a place that i could create a safe, safe haven uh, a refuge for people that didn't have any other resorts any other options and uh it was kind of my dream and so when i was able to start getting on the road uh it just so happened that my travels ended up taking me here. I got a job locally and went through my own uh, domestic violence situation and um, I came out here and I was blessed to, uh, to meet Mojo and um, she helped me out when I needed it. And uh, so I've been trying to repay the favor ever since and uh, it's been really good. I'm very blessed to be here. Okay. So you just started traveling recently, you mentioned? Um, a couple years ago, after my parents passed away, uh, I had taken care of them. And once mom died, I was really, I, I, didn't, I didn't have anything else really tying me to my hometown. And I needed to get a, a, a change of pace. I uh, needed to get a fresh start. And so I started RV life and travel life at that point and uh, worked at some resorts in northern Minnesota actually and then um, after I got married my husband and I traveled uh, to the west coast and um, kind of work camped along the way and um, yeah it was uh, it's, it's been um, it's been quite an adventure mm -hmm. <laughs> quite an adventure indeed um, so you told me that uh, all the the help that you give the community is, comes out comes out of your own pocket. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I do get some. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go down into uh, into town, and uh, there's a local guy named Neely that um, does food donations. And uh, recently, I was lucky enough. Uh, I talked with him and I let him know what I was doing, and um, he kicked me down quite a bit of uh, like some cases of of canned goods. So um, I've been, you know, just distributing those and, and but most of the time it's it's coming out of my pocket um so you know i i do whatever i can to make sure that that people have what they need and that they have somewhere to go if they're you know if they're hungry mm -hmm. what have you i'm gonna start okay. doing community meals here as well um so uh the haven used to do uh a weekly meal and then daily coffee so i'll be starting mm -hmm. that back up and okay. uh that'll be i'm really excited to, to start that uh, but right now, just basically anybody who shows up who's hungry, I'll cook them up something or I'll give them some canned food if they want to take it with them. And, um, you know, we just we just kind of, whatever's needed, we get her done. So what kind of income do you have? I, I don't actually have any, like, regular income right now. Um, generally, I, uh, I have, you know, I get my own food stamps and um, 
I do some uh, photography work, so uh, I'll, I'll make some money off that, you know, here and there. Um, I have some really good friends and family that sometimes help out, and uh, I do odd jobs, you know, I'll, I'll do slab cab stuff, um, you know, and, and make a little bit off that. Mostly it just pays the gas, but uh, it gets people what they need, so uh, that's, you know, it mostly, mostly pays for itself. I usually end up putting a little bit in, but... It's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you said that the Haven used to like help out the community, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, do you know the people that because you just got here to mm -hmm. Slap City? When you got here, were the people? No, was there, it was abandoned. This camp was abandoned. Yeah, it was abandoned. Um, uh, the the guy that used to run it was named Pastor Dave. He was oh, okay. well loved by the community. I've heard about him. Um, and him and his wife used to run it, and okay. uh, unfortunately, they both passed away. And at that point, the camp just kind of ended up going into disrepair, got scavenged. It was kind of used as a, you know, a crash spot, party spot. And uh, when I got here, it was, you know, knee deep in trash. And, um, you know, the, the structure here was pretty much falling down. So I've now taken that down. We're redoing the roof and uh, starting on that section. And then I'll, I'll redo this section here and uh, make it so that, you know, uh, that was just really unsafe and it was coming down in the windstorm so we had to go ahead and take it down, but um, it'll be getting rebuilt and I'm gonna be expanding it back that way. So hopefully the goal is to be able to seat about 100 people um, at, you know, once, once everything's all, mm -hmm. all completed. Um, at this point, I, I think I have room for probably about 25. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it was just, you know, Pastor Dave did uh, did a Bible study. He did free coffee every day, all day, and then uh, the weekly meal Saturdays before the range. And you know, when I told some of the elders what I wanted to do, you know, what my dream was, uh, and I was looking for a camp to do that at, and I had seen this place, and they said, you know, it's funny because that's exactly what used to be done here. So it would be great to have you go in and restart that. And uh, I got the blessing from from them and started getting to work oh cool so um i know that there's a lot of um a drug use here in slap city like a big drug problem right do you, ha do you have any issues with drugs i don't have any issues you have, with drugs. No. i mean like you know i smoke a bit of weed here and there and yeah, but, um, not, but that's it yeah yeah okay. no i mean i don't uh i don't use iv drugs or anything like that um i feel for anybody who does and i want to make sure that they're safe and, yeah. and that they don't die and so that's why we do um you know some of the I try to keep a little bit of a stock on hand for supplies that they would need. Um, Narcan's the biggest thing that I try to keep on hand. So, okay. Um, I have compassion for anybody, and I don't discriminate against anybody for what they do or what they don't do. Yeah. Um, okay. I think it's important to help anybody, no matter what their situation is. Okay. Um, I know that you have done modeling work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you get started in that? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, my mom got me into pageants when I was a kid, and it kind of just went from there. Uh, I modeled m pretty heavily up until I had a, a nasty car accident. And at that point, um, the strobes from the, the flash, you know, uh, started giving me migraines. And um, after my accident, I wasn't actually even able to walk for about six months. So I had to take a break from it for a while and uh, got back into it. but. It's mostly just for, you know, uh, for fun now. Um, however, I did enter a competition for Maxim um, to win a cover shoot. I'm in the top 10 right now. This is the final cut week. So if I can get into the top five, I'm in the running for a cover shoot trip to France and $25,000, which would go a long way to this place. Uh, and, and that's exactly what I intend on doing with it if I win. Um, I want to take that money and I want to invest it in the community here and, and really do something good here. Okay. Um, uh, how long ago was that accident that you said you had? 2007 uh, okay. is, is when it happened. And uh, I mean, it really changed my life at that point. Uh, I went through severe pain. You know, the, the doctors doped me up on all the painkillers and stuff. And um, it was a few years ago that I... Uh, I, I got off the painkillers and was able to just be me again and work again and move again and um, just be able to to live you know fairly normally. I'm not not where I was before the accident, but I am blessed to be able to walk 
to move, to be able to work. I mean, that's, I, I can't tell you what it's like to go from laid up in bed 18 hours a day, not able to do anything mm. to being able to have a, a life again. It's, uh, I worked really hard to get there, you know, and I, physical therapy and yoga and, uh, you know, um, spent a lot of time in water, which really helped. And I had a lot of procedures done to try and fix some of the damage. Um, I was a candidate for surgery, but it didn't end up working out. They wanted to do a two level fusion in my neck and a single level fusion in my back. And the universe kind of conspired to not let me have that surgery done. And it was actually a blessing. Uh, but they did go in and they cauterized the nerves in my neck. Uh, so, cause I would get terrible muscle spasms where I couldn't even move my head. Mm. I, I mean, even just turning my eyes a little bit was excruciating pain. And uh, so they, they burned out most of the nerves from that level. Uh, they call it a nerve block. Mm. And I've had over 150 injections done. Um, I mean, I've, I've done just about everything to try and get myself healthy and well uh, and, and try to fix the issues that the accident caused. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a long road, but uh, doing a lot better now. That, that was a turning point in your life, that accident. Yeah, yeah. After the accident, um, and after I, I started getting on my feet a little bit, but then my, my father got sick, and I had to step back from my life again and take care of him. Uh, and he died um, in 2012. Uh, it was a pretty, pretty traumatic, bad, bad situation when he passed away. I was actually taking him home from the hospital. Wow. Uh, he was discharged. I had his papers in my hand and he collapsed. Uh, wow. his, uh, his lungs hemorrhaged and oh, wow. he bled out in my arms. My so arms. I was oh. pretty traumatized from that. Um, mm. I didn't speak for about four months and I went through some of my own real serious mental health stuff as a result of that. Uh, then my mom, um, she got sick in 2017 and uh, she moved in with me at that point and I took care of her for the last year um, of her life. And uh, you know, she passed away just after Christmas. So that was another one of those fun turning point experiences. And you know, I've just, I've really been through the ringer in my own life and that's what made me want to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want anyone to ever have to suffer without a shoulder to cry on or someone to help them. Uh, so those, those experiences informed who I am, you know. I don't know that before that happened or before the accident that I would have been in this position. I don't know that I would have chosen to do this with my life. Uh, so ultimately I'm grateful or, you know, the, the bad things that happened. Um, it was awful to go through, but I, I mean, I've, I've saved lives already. There's two people that OD'd in my presence since I've been here in Slab oh. City. And uh, luckily I know CPR and I oh. was able to, to get them back. And, you know, they're still with us as a result. Mm -hmm. And there's other lives that have been, you know, uh, really, well affected by my uh, my presence in them because I understand what it's like to go through those hard things and so I've helped a lot of people and I'm sure they're you know uh, I would say it's an ultimate net positive uh, even though it came from some of the darkest times in my life so, uh, so you mentioned to me that you've, you've had trouble here in Slab City already in your short in your short <laughs> stay <laughs> Yeah. Which is not surprising. No, uh, I uh, had a little bit of run-in. If you want, uh, you want to take a seat? Yeah, let's go ahead yeah. and take a seat. Yeah, come on in. Getting into the nitty-gritty of it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bomber killer. <laughs> Must have. This is my little Brox. This is one of my, uh, my adoptees. Well, he adopted me anyway. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so trouble in Slab City. Uh, well, you know, I made it a point to make friends with those that other people might not, uh, might not want to, uh, be around, you know, particularly the people that I heard were the ones to stay away from were kind of the ones that I ended up, you know, uh, uh, making nice with. And there we have a, a couple of notorious bullies here um, and 
I befriended them and uh, you know it, it was for the most part fine but then it wasn't fine and uh, as a result my uh, my windshield was busted out of my car uh, I had to be on 24-hour watch on my camp you know they were threatening to, to burn me out um, it was uh, it was a pretty stressful period of time actually uh, Got woke up one morning and attacked with a machete. Uh, that was, yeah, yeah, I got into a machete fight. Um, I had rake and was the victor of that one, as I'm still standing here, you know. Um, and, you know, uh, as a result, you know, it, it's, it, that's also ultimately been a net positive because people know that they can't push me around now. And I'm not going to just roll over and take it. You know, um, I'm not a weakling. I'm a very kind person, but uh, I will not be bullied. I will not have somebody tell me what I can and cannot do um, just because they don't, you know, they don't like it or uh, they've come up with some, you know, delusional idea of what I'm about. Um, and uh, so I just, I handled it and, you know, it's, it's mostly calmed down now. Uh, there's an uneasy truth at this point, you know, uh, I hit back and, and people know that now they know that, you know, so, um, you know, just had a, a few things, you know, I had, uh, somebody that I considered a friend, you know, steal from me, um, and then go around, you know, telling stories about what I did as a, as a retaliation for that. Um, you know, I, I, another friend, you know, ran off with my car one night and, you know, said that they were protecting it. <laughs> I was able to get it back and, and, you know, again, ultimately it's all, it's all worked out okay, but, um, I'm definitely, I'm not, I'm not one to, to mess around. I will be your best friend. I will do just about anything for people that I care, care for. Um, but I will also do just about anything to protect myself and my my camp and the people that um, you know I'm in that I have a responsibility for. If somebody is here at the Haven, they will not be touched. Um, they will they will be under my protection and the protection of those that protect me. You know, so we make sure that people stay safe and uh, we do our best to try and help out. Um, you know, if, if somebody comes to me and. I had a guy just the other day, his camp got burned out, and he's a nice guy, you know, he's, he doesn't hurt anybody, he doesn't bother anybody, and so, you know, that's a situation that we're um, looking into figuring out how to handle, because, um, you know, he's he's been burned out twice now in the last just couple months, and mostly just because he's a kind, he's a nice person, he's a, he's a real gentle guy, he's not the kind of guy to hit back. Um, so people like to pick on him, and I'm not standing for that. 